less than 1% of PGA of American Club professionals, and only one LPGA Tour and four PGA Tour players are black. These numbers don't reflect the lack of talented black golfers, but rather limited access and resources. The John Shipman is a vehicle to provide opportunities that can fundamentally increase diversity in golf on a national scale. When the Rocket Mortgage Classic came to Detroit, it was important for the Rocket Mortgage Classic and the PJ Tour, knowing they were in the city of Detroit with 85%, such a large black population, how can the community be involved with the event? Now in his second year, the John Shippen National Golf Invitational is a competition between the nation's top amateur and professional black golfers. The champions of two women's and one men's event receive exemptions into LPGA tournaments and the PGA Tours Rock and Mortgage Classic. The common thread is, I want to be on the LPGA Tour, I want to be on the PGA Tour. This event allows that opportunity for them to see each other, to support each other, but to also be able to say, hey, you know what, I can really do this. And a lot of times, it's not just the skill set, it's the mental psyche. And everybody who plays golf understand that's 85, 90% of the game is mental. This gives just the reaffirmation that we are supposed to be there. There are opportunities and to continue to just give them that extra boost to keep going because they do believe that there's people and organizations that want to see them strive. It's equity in action. Between the priority that we're placing on diversity, equity, and inclusion, what Rocket Mortgage wanted to accomplish around this event in this community, and just the need in general to diversify the game, that's where the John Shippen idea was born. Right now, this is a treat. The fact that I'm sitting here with three brothers talking about golf. Aaron, kind of want to start with you. Yep. You know, give me your background. How'd you get into the game? My dad played golf, gave me a plastic set when I was three. Just kind of grew into a love of the game of golf and played Sacramento State in college and turned pro in 2018. I'm from Senegal, West Africa. Started playing golf out there when I was three years old. Probably had less than a thousand golfers in the whole country. Uh huh. I went to high school in California. I went back home, turned pro right away. EJ, talk to me, man. Tell, tell me yeah. how you got in the game. I started when I was 13, 14. My best friend got me into the game of golf. How have you guys navigated through those certain barriers, you know, when not having you know, all the resources needed to kind of move forward in this game? You know, I turned pro very early uh, at 19. My parents didn't, couldn't really sponsor me or anything. What I would usually do is kind of work for about six months and try and go and play for six months around Africa. I graduated college and moved back home with my parents. And the first thing my dad says, well, now you got to get a job. Well, I thought <laughs> playing professional golf was going to be my job. Talk to me about carrying the legacy of the black golfer. For a kid that gets to see this or can watch it on TV, not only does he see, you know, multiple black guys playing golf, but he sees multiple black guys playing good golf. Golf is cool. I think it's an honor to be out here and, and have kids look up to us and like us play that part, just showing them we can have fun, we can come out here and we can play good golf. The mission is to open the door, I'd say, for, for African children. We're in 2022 and we still don't have one black African on the PGA Tour. We've never had one. Mm. And so that's the mission. Wow, they, they can't be what they don't see, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Saturday morning, Detroit Golf Club, round one. 22 players are vying for one exemption into the PGA Tours Rocket Mortgage Classic. And the air is thick with anticipation. Welcome to the first round of the John Shippen National Golf Invitational, presented by Rocket Mortgage. First to the tee from Cincinnati, Ohio, please welcome Kevin Hall. Four-time APGA Tour champion Kevin Hall is competing for another PGA Tour star. as is Senegal's number one professional, Samba Nyang, who struggles to find his way on unfamiliar ground. It was a tough start, I'd say. I wasn't really very comfortable with every, anything. I mean, uh, club-wise, uh, course-wise, obviously, you know, first time playing golf course. But, you know, I enjoyed it. 
Howard University standout, Everett White and Jr., follows up an early bogey with four birdies on the front. Just tried to keep pushing. Started with an early bogey and just told myself, keep going, there's birdies out here. If I hit the fairways, it's a pretty straightforward course and just keep my head down and keep going. PGA Tour Canada member Aaron Beverly is also searching for birdies and is even at the turn. The 27-year-old grew up performing on two very different stages. My life story is, I don't want to say drastically different than a lot of people, but it is definitely unique. Take one. The concentration that it takes to be good at ballet, it really translates to every sport and kind of every you know walk of life. If you can stand on stage and perform in front of thousands of people, then hitting a golf ball in front of Tiger Woods is really no problem. First on the tee, from Fairfield, California, please welcome Aaron Beverly. Woo! Life's been like a whirlwind in the best way possible. I had a chance to play at the Genesis Invitational, and that was a whole event in my life that I'll never be able to forget, uh, so that was awesome. And then qualified for PGA Tour Canada shortly after that, and been playing other tournaments, APJ events, kind of across the country, so it seems like it's been nonstop traveling on the go. I just came from Chicago, and then to Arizona. Next, I got Kentucky, Detroit. It's amazing to have this opportunity to play in this event and try to push this movement forward. We all add a, a little bit different swag to the game of golf. This is kind of like my baby collection. My favorite pair, oh, easily. Conquer 11s. They just look nice. They go with anything, some black jeans, hoodie, t-shirt. One of my favorite pictures of my dad and myself just because we got the same focus on our face, same kind of determination kind of embodies everything that he instilled in me. So he passed on the 21st night of September. I just finished a golf tournament on the 20th. Ended up driving straight to the hospital right after the tournament and kind of was there for his last moments. I wouldn't be playing golf if it wasn't for my dad. Put a plastic club in my hand at like two. And I used to take me to the golf course every weekend. I first came out here when I was probably about four or five years old. My dad and I used to come down here and have putting contests. Forever grateful I had so many hours and moments with them. Wish I had more. I know it was tough for Aaron when his dad passed. They were always together. He wouldn't see one without the other. High school, all our matches were here. My dad used to sit with his best friend in the bar and every time I'd come up whole nine, he was always sitting right there. So that's a pretty cool memory. Rancho Salon is, is home away from home for me. Definitely wouldn't be where I'm at now if it weren't for this golf course. His swing from eight seven or eight was just really nice. The tempo was good, he had good footwork. He didn't do a lot of the ballerina moves where they spin and lose their traction. I like to think my golf swing is really pretty and nice to look at, and I like to think that my dancing was the same way, so I definitely took that from ballet and into golf. Those two definitely translated for me. It's been about 13 years since I've been back here. Hi. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Oh, just a little bit. You were a teeny little 10 year old. Yeah, now I got muscle. <laughs> Got started in ballet when I was three. I mean, my mom took me to a class. I told his dad, I said, you know, this kid really loves to dance. The athletes I know have danced, uh, Herschel Walker, Lynn Swan, Steph Curry's done a little bit, greatest receiver of all time, Jerry Rice. You can't do any dance move without, you know, your core being strong and balanced. It makes golf seem like a piece of cake. This is the best workout of my life. It's the only reason why I hit the ball far, I like to think, so it's good. I like to try to move through life with the grace of my mother and then try to be as competitive as my dad was. Because it was not only my dream to be a professional golfer, it was his dream for me as well. He's following in his dad's footsteps. I hope he continues on on this journey and whatever he says he's going to do, he does it. I know where I want to end up 
on the PJ Tour and one of the best golfers in the world. At the end of the day, it comes down to being good at the game of golf. So hopefully kids can see us and imagine themselves playing at the highest level. We are at a turning point where I think we can have a deep impact in moving the game forward. This is the story of the tournament namesake, John Shippen. John Shippen's story is a forgotten story to the world of golf. We talk about Charlie Sifford, Lee Elder, and of course, Tiger Woods, but no one has ever gone back that far to put him in as part of that history. Shippen was the Jackie Robinson of golf. He transcended golf in an era where no African-Americans were playing golf. He made history three folds. First American, first African-American, and the youngest American to ever play in a U.S. Open. John Shippen was born in Anacosta, Washington, D.C. in 1879. He came to Shinnecock with his father and the family to administer the Shinnecock Indians. John was nine years old then, and he and other members of the Shinnecock Indian Nation actually built the golf course by hand. After helping to build the now-famed course, Shippen took an interest in the sport. By the age of 16, the natural talent was working full-time as an assistant and in a few short years, became the first American-born golfing professional. 1896, that was the first official USGA tournament out at Shinnecock. And no Americans ever played in the USGA tournament. The Scottish and Irish people were invited over to play, and the members of Shinnecock had entered John Chippen Jr. to play in this event. He was ostracized by the players that came from Scotland, calling them the colored boys, that they did not want to play with them. He was only 16 years old. He finished fifth place, and after that, he played in five U.S. Opens. But when you look at the history of the game, Shippen should have a place in the annals of golf for what he did. Shippen's golfing pursuits were in stark contrast to the norm in the early 1900s, when black golfers were largely prohibited from playing alongside white men and women. There was something about him that apparently piqued the interest of those that played the game at that time. He was always somewhere being snuck on a golf course where he couldn't play to play the members. He played this whole eastern seaboard from New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island. But after years of plying his trade on the road, a new home emerged in 1921. Shady Rest is important because it was the first African-American country club in America. This was where African-Americans came to have a good time and feel free and not feel threatened about anything. Duke Ellington, all of the big bands, they were here. Althea Gibson taught tennis. They had a tennis court here. Uh, they had the golf course. John got to keep become the pro here in the late 20s when he stayed the head pro here for 25, 30 years. He lived right upstairs on the third floor. He just loved playing golf, and he loved teaching golf to the members of the club. John Shippen's story to me is very relevant with everything that's going on today in our society. I think this is a good time to know about the past. Although it has been more than half a century since Shippen passed away, his legacy as a golf pioneer lives on through a new generation. Thanks in part to events like the John Shippen Women's Shootout presented by Cognizant at Mountain Ridge Country Club in West Caldwell, New Jersey.
John Shippen is so important. They have just done such an incredible job to keep John Shippen's historical events alive, and I love that. I'm just so glad they're able to keep it alive um, for us to carry it on for him. In addition to honoring his namesake history and accomplishments, the shootout also has significant impact on the future. For one of the eight women in the field, as the winner of the 18-hole event will earn an exemption into the LPGA Tour's Cognizant Founders Cup. The John Shippen brings opportunity because people have paved the way before us. If you win this tournament, you get an exemption into the LPGA event, you get an opportunity to go out there and win it and, and kind of change the perspective of how golf is viewed and seen. It's important because it shows women who look like me that there are opportunities out there for us and they can do this too, and they're not alone. First on the tee is Lucarabi Abe. It gives us an opportunity to compete against the best and to see where we level up. It's hard for anyone to get an exemption into an LPGA event, so the idea that we can compete for one is a huge deal in golf, and I think it's something we're all thankful for. LaCarabie Abe makes the most of the opportunity early in her round, going one under through four holes, but quickly loses momentum and cards five consecutive bogeys before making the turn. However, she isn't the only player struggling in the cold, windy conditions. The front nine yields a mere four birdies to the entire field, and three belong to Abe's playing partner, Breanne Jones, who surges into the lead kind of struggled the first time. I made the turn and I was three or four down. And so I was just like, you never know with golf, you just do your best. Let's just see how much fun we can have. That was kind of the goal. Abe battles back with two birdies and only one bogey to take a one-shot lead over Jones to the 18th. It was pretty hard today going down the stretch. Like I could feel it was pretty intense with Brianna and I, but I guess that like that's part of the fun. And then I bogeyed the hole, and I was like, I don't really want to go into a playoff. And like, it's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, I'm like, you practice and you play because you want to be tested. She ultimately passes the test, outlasting Jones on the first playoff hole to secure her first career start on the LPGA Tour. Look, Harry, we're so excited for you to be able to show up this week at the Cognizant Founders Cup. It's such an opportunity to bring talent like this so that those little girls know what they can grow up and be. It makes a huge deal for them that they see black women in spaces that you know maybe they wouldn't have seen themselves in in 20, 30 years ago. So you have to work hard, you have to earn it, but knowing that you can do it too is a big deal. Abe's opportunity came a few days later at the LPGA Cognizant Founders Cup. I think it'll be a great opportunity to just learn about myself and see where my game's at. And it's always fun that you get to compete with the best in the world at anything, so I'm excited. And even par 72 in the opening round has her within striking distance of making the cut. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. I had kind of 24 hours to like get my bearings and figure out what was going on, but ever since then, yeah, it was a great opportunity. I mean, I played with two great girls, I learned a lot in practice rounds, and just how to manage my game, and saw a lot out of myself this week. Unfortunately, a second round 73 leaves Abe two shots shy of making the weekend. But she takes solace in her strong showing and remains committed to achieving her dream. It's been good to kind of measure my game on a course like this and see where I need to improve and see where I can get better and then see where also like I do really well around a course like this. All positives for this week. I mean, it would be naive to be negative about it. So yeah, I'm excited just to like get back on the course in a couple weeks and hopefully work hard and see how things pan out. Kevin, when you first heard about what they were doing to increase diversity and provide a platform, what was your thoughts of that? I thought it was a wonderful thing. I've been doing this since 2005, the first few years. 
there was not a lot of opportunities for people like me, people of color, black golfers. I'm excited for the younger kids. I can't wait to see how many black golfers that will make it to the highest level. Because groups like this, it's good for the game. When we talk about your career, how do you define success? I've played on the PGA Tour, Corn Ferry. I've won on the APGA. I spend time with people from all walks of life. If I wake up and say, wow, I inspired someone today, that's success. That's how I look at things now at 40. I can't believe I'm 40. <laughs> what will you tell the young African-American golfer who's at home and he's trying to maximize the little amount of resource that he has to get to the next level? When you have an opportunity that comes your way, do your best to grab it. If you don't succeed, it's not the end of the world. Wake up the next day, keep trying. I tell people all the time, my lows are low. And I could have easily given up, but I didn't. I kept working hard, one day at a time. You never know what's around the corner. Not every day is all good, but you gotta keep going. I, I like that, actually. That's, that's what I need. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kevin Hall's first round ends with a 4 over 76, but he remains hopeful for tomorrow. My rhythm and tempo was off a little bit today. It all built up from there. Sometimes you just don't have it. You're not going to have good days all the time. I'll sleep tonight, get up tomorrow, and get after it again. On the other hand, Aaron Beverly finds success down the stretch, adding two circles to his scorecard. However, two squares erase any positive momentum, and he finishes at even par. Kind of put myself out of position a couple times, but I'm going to treat tomorrow basically like a Monday qualifier that you'd play. So low score and just kind of whatever happens from there happens. Despite a bogey on the 18th, Everett White Jr. sits tied at the top of the leaderboard and will head into the final round at four under par. Just go out there and try and shoot the best I can. And tomorrow, is just a different day. Just keep my head down. Don't try and do too much and just stay an even kill game. Eight players finished in red numbers during the first round of the John Shippen National Golf Invitational. Samba Young, however, never finds his rhythm. Before the tournament play began, we caught up with Samba as he tried to get acclimated more than 4,000 miles away from his home course. We're a little bit away from home. Yeah. From what you're used to, right? Very much away. Now, what does the John Shipman Invitational mean to you? It's the best opportunity I've gotten to play a PGA Tour event. I played most of my professional career in Africa, mm -hmm. and this is as close as it gets to, to the goal, which is, you know, to be on tour. Talk to me about the type of courses over there. Basically, my, my home course where I practice is a nine holes. Not like this at all? No, very far from this. Fairways are basically just sand. Really? You know. How will this tournament help you and prepare you for some of the uh, tournaments to come in the future? Playing on a great track like this might be first first time even. I'm probably playing on the PGA Tour golf course. Really? <laughs> so yeah. this is... Uh, as close as it gets to, you know, where we want to go. So def it's definitely going to be a learning experience. You have won 23 tournaments yeah. in Africa. How do you define success? Success here is what I've been looking for and that has been the goal. I'm just trying to adapt to whatever we have here and make sure I do it as well as possible, well enough to, to be successful here. I think right now you're uh, you're on a good good start. Thank you so, so much. Man, it's a it was pleasure, a pleasure, man. Thank you so much Thank and you. good luck this week. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good one. As final round action begins, Samba struggles continue. He just couldn't find his footing on American soil, posting a final round 79. Meanwhile, Aaron Beverly is off to a hot start. 
firing three birdies on the front nine. Hit it really well, made a couple putts early. I was able to make the turn at three under, wish out a birdie the par fives on the front, because then it could have been really special. But just ahead of Beverly is another player on the Sunday surge, Wyatt Worthington II, who birdies half of the first dozen holes to bounce back from a round of one over on Saturday. I went to the range after the first round and just had to go back to the drawing board. And luckily enough, I kind of figured it out. I gave myself way more opportunities than I did yesterday. And I was lucky enough to convert some of those putts. The field chases amateur Ever White and Jr who holds the solo lead at six under after two early birdies. But a double bogey at the ninth drops him into a three-way tie heading into the back nine. With the leaders only one shot ahead, the John Shippen Trophy and a spot in the Rocket Mortgage Classic came down to the final stretch on Sunday. Welcome back to the John Shippen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the John Shippen National Golf Invitational. It's pretty historic for them to have 16 young black professionals like this get together to play this event. Who knows where these ladies will be 10 years from now? You know, this might be the kickstart for a bunch of them. Have fun, try to stay in the fairway. <laughs> if I'm in the fairway, I'm not in the rough. Hey, hey, what's Good up, Smith family? What's going on? How you doing? Hi, Good luck today. Hey, good night's sleep. Oh, I got the coolest, funniest caddies. A member here. We're just going to have fun. That's my mindset. Just keep it easy. Take good shots. Stay focused. The opening round features 16 women competing for an exemption into two upcoming LPGA Tour events, the Meyer LPGA Classic for Simply Give and the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. Teeing off from Fort Worth, Texas, the 2021 John Shippen National Invitational Champion, Anita Uwadia. The defending champ catches fire early with two birdies in her first three holes. However, the rest of the field struggles out of the gates, combining for only one during the same span. One shot, two shots, that's nothing in tournaments like this. It's one of those things. You can lose it in one hole. So don't worry about the field. Just worry about yourself. And if I can play that way, I'll do pretty good. While Anita Uwadia takes an early lead, Georgia Oboe heads in the opposite direction after three bogeys and a double through five holes. I just tried to stay in the moment. Even though I was five over par, I kind of like disregarded the score, so to speak, and I just focused on just hitting fairways, hitting greens, and then a few long pots just drop. Three consecutive circles on the scorecard move Oboe back within striking distance, making a turn at just two over par. In terms of how well I fought back, that's just something I just need to take for every round going forward. Sedina Parks begins her back nine one shot off the pace, and with the birdie at 10, she ties Uwadia for the lead. However, a bogey on the next hole quickly erases any momentum. Day one for me, I just made sure I stayed under control, made some putts, I got some great up and downs, had some bad holes but didn't let those get to me. Just the simple things in golf that you can take and carry on to the next hole to make sure that you're just staying positive. Park's playing partner, LeCare B. Abe, the 2022 John Shippen Shootout champion, posts five birdies on the day. Unfortunately, Abe follows each birdie with a disappointing bogey, ending the round at even par. I played fine today. I'd kind of make a birdie and then I'd make a bogey. Kept myself in position, so I mean, that's what you want on the first day is just to, to have a shot. With three birdies in her final four holes, Obo joins Abe in the clubhouse with the opening round of 72. Both sit one shot ahead of Sedina Parks, who ends her day at one over par. Everyone will be chasing Anita Uwadia, who captured three birdies in her final six holes and will be sleeping on the lead at three under par. Every tournament you want to win, and I'm going to come out being aggressive. That's just my nature. I'm always aggressive on the golf course. On Thursday, Anita begins the final round with four players chasing her within four strokes of the lead, highlighted by LeCarabee Abe. 
36 holes is a long time. We've played 18, we have 18 more. So you just never know what can happen. So just try to play as long as I can. Like Abe, Georgia Oboe and Sedina Parks also climb up the leaderboard, both adding their first birdies of the day at the fourth. If you're swinging the ball well, you can make a lot of birdies. You can still make mistakes, but I think if you make enough birdies, you can let the mistakes happen. I've been here, I've done this before, playing on tour, and stress doesn't help you win anything. It just adds more weight on your shoulders. I know that I have full control of me and nothing else. Back-to-back -back birdies earn you Wadia some breathing room. However, two straight frustrating bogeys to close out her front nine leaves the door open for Parks. With consecutive birdies at 10 and 11, plus yet another bogey by Iwadia, Parks captures the outright lead for the first time all tournament. I knew I was at the top of the leaderboard, but I didn't know where I was. This game humbles me enough to let me know that I'm not gonna win them all. Do I want to? Yes. With only seven holes remaining, Sedina Parks holds a one-shot lead over first-round leaders Anita Uwadia and Georgia Obo. And she continues to heat up down the stretch, capturing her fourth birdie of the day, firing three under 69, overcoming a four-shot deficit for the victory. I'm just excited and I'm grateful to be part of the John Shippen. I'm grateful to be in the history books of winning the John Shippen. All right, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Take care. You guys Good luck. This is the first win for me in a really long time. This has been amazing. It's a wonderful opportunity. I've been looking forward to this. This is only the beginning for me. Um, I'm going to keep winning. So y'all got to get better. Y'all got to get tight, because I'm going to keep going, boy. With the win, Parks has been awarded a sponsor exemption to both the Meyer LPGA Classic for Simply Give and the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational, although she still needs to choose a partner to compete alongside in the team event. I'm just going to say it like it is. I want Anita to play with me. That would be lit. So. I picked Anita. We have similar games. We have similar body builds. She's a little bit stronger than me, and she types it a little bit further than me. I think it'll be fun to see us like mash up and, and kill it. So. You know, this game, you take more L's than you do W's. Let's just be real. So a win is a win. This win means a lot to me. And I think it's the first of a lot to come. So I'm going to go out there and do my thing and get more wins. With the crowded leaderboard and holes running out, Wyatt Worthy in the second changes his mindset. I kind of had a I will not lose mentality and luckily enough, I kind of just found a rhythm and I didn't want to let go. So I just tried to ride as long as I could. Wyatt drains birdies on 16 and 17 and heads to the clubhouse with a solo lead at six under. But all he can do is watch as Michael Herrera's putter gets hot. Birdies on 14 and 15 has Herrera sitting just one shot behind Worthington in second, heading to 18. But his birdie put at the last doesn't fall, sealing the victory for Worthington the second. As black people, we don't get opportunities like this every day. I feel as though we can have a lot more, you know, a melting pot that's on the PGA Tour, but one of the tough things is that having the opportunity to access the resources to do it. And that's what it's all about, you know, Rocket Mortgage and the John Shipping giving me this opportunity. This is one opportunity I won't take for granted, but I'm also excited for more opportunities that opens the door too, because I feel as though I have what it takes to play on the tour. Bogey free round from Willie Mack III and defending champion Tim O'Neill vaults them up the final leaderboard. But the low round of the day belongs to Worthington II. And now for our winner this week, the score of six under par total, the winner of the John Shippen, Wyatt Worthington.
on Tuesday at the Area 313 Celebrity Scramble, a fundraiser to end Detroit's digital divide. Six John Shippen participants rubbed elbows with superstars. Star studded? Are you kidding me? Legends of legends? Like, yo, we had the MVP, the unbelievable Jason Day, and Tony Finau. That's very inspirational, and that's where I want to be. It's what you work for, you know what I mean? So I'm excited for him. Oh, he got one in there for me. You got to take care of the rest. He has PGA Tour level shots. What's up, stick it. All right, man. You got time to shine, baby. Oh, let's go. Yeah. My Thank man. You. You're Thank welcome. You. Next on the tee, from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, Wyatt Worthington, second. As the first round of the Rocket Mortgage Classic tees off, the challenges begin early for Worthington the second. Worthington trying to make a two. Oh, just slides by. Good putt. Four consecutive bogeys on the front nine and three on the back add up to a first round 79. It's very easy to beat yourself up. I had a great support system that came out and followed me. People were cheering me on, even though I didn't have my best stuff. Worthington II has a better second round, picking up two birdies on his way to shooting a two over 74. He misses the weekend, but takes home plenty of valuable experience. It gave me more validation that I can play out here and I know I can do this at a high level. While Wyatt's week may have ended earlier than he had hoped, his place as a champion of the John Shippen is secured. I had such a great time kicking with some of the men and women who participate in the John Shippen. Thank you, John Shippen, for allowing us to continue the conversation, have an opportunity to increase the participation number in a sport that is known for having high barriers to entry. Thank you for watching John Shippen, presented by Rock and Mortgage, and I'm Will Lowry.